All right, everybody, welcome back to this how-to series. Today, we're going to do something special called router on a stick. So let's talk about our normal topologies. What we might do in a regular network is have a couple of switches and then have our hosts and then route between them, just as you see here. And another topology, we might have the switch actually broken up into a couple of VLANs and then route between them again with the same router. But what happens if we want to connect another router to the topology? And all of these ports that we need happen to be Ethernet. Well, we find out that on a lot of our routers, we only have two Ethernet ports. And one way out of that situation is to use router on a stick. And so that's what we're going to do today. So what we're going to do is connect our topology up like this and only use one Ethernet port on the router, but we're going to use sub-interfaces on that particular interface. And on the switch with the VLANs, we're going to set up a trunk line. All right. Normally, routers have no idea that VLANs are, are happening. So if you were to ask the routers in these two topologies about the VLANs, they would have no idea. This configuration is going to give the router some knowledge of the VLANs. So let me close out of Visio here. All right, first up, we'll take a look at our switch. So I haven't done anything yet except configure the two IP addresses for the hosts. So we take a look at our VLANs here. You can see that everybody's in VLAN 1. So what I'm going to do is set up two VLANs. And I'm using a particular set of VLANs for a reason. So I'm using the interface range command here. VLAN 10. And then we'll do 7 to 12. And we'll use 20. OK. So now if I do show VLAN, we can see that I've got a bunch of ports in these two VLANs, but I haven't set up my trunk line. So I like to specify what I'm doing. I don't want the switch to figure it out. So what I'm going to do is change this guy to a trunk port. Now there's two things that I have to do. I have to use the mode command to tell it that, but I also got to specify the encapsulation that I want to do. And so I'm going to use dot one oh, switch port. Sorry, forgot that. OK. We're going to use uh, an encapsulation type specified by IEEE 802.1Q. And then we're going to do switch port mode trunk. Now, on a lot of iOS versions, it'll grouse about the order. So this is the order that you want to do it in. And that'll about do it for our trunk lines. So let me take a quick look at my router now. So I'm just going to switch over. And you can see that I'm on my router now. And I have no configuration here. Now I'm wired to port 0 slash 0, I think. Yep, 0 slash 0. So when I do all my configuration, it's going to exist on 0 slash 0. But what I'm going to do is interface 0 slash 0 dot 10. And what that does is it puts me on the sub interface on that particular interface. Now there's two things that I have to do here. One is I need to give it an IP address. So this is just going to be the default gateway on that side. Whoops. So if we take a look here, this is actually where I'm going to make it VLAN aware. So we're going to maintain the same encapsulation standard. And then I'm going to tell it what VLAN. Now it's not going to crab at me about the, uh, the order of my operation here. Now I'll take a moment here to, to indicate what I was talking about IP addresses and VLAN IDs and sub-interfaces. 
I set up VLAN 10 and VLAN 20 on my switch. So I'm going to also set up sub interfaces 10 and 20 on my router interface. And I'm going to use the 10 and the 20 networks. It's a really handy way of, of going about things so you don't forget, so that you always match up numbers and sub interfaces and VLAN IDs and subnets. So I'm going to do the exact same thing. Sub interface 0 0.20. And we'll do VLAN 20 for the encapsulation up to the router. And then make this guy the default gateway for that side. Now let's take a quick look at our routing table. Oh, <laughs> I suppose it helps if I turn on the interface. There we go. Now my switch is going to go through spanning tree discovery because I have a pretty plain uh, configuration. But here is my routing table. Note that I'm directly connected to these two networks, but the connection point is the sub interface. So that's pretty much it. I've got 10.254 and uh, 20.254. And let's see how well this works. So first, we've got this node being 10.1. And I am going to ping 10.254. Hey, look, the router's alive and well. Let me give it a little more room here. Okay, so let's ping the other side of the router, and I'll bring this up a little bit so you guys can see it a little better. Whoops, there we go. So that's the other side of the router, or really the other side of the interface, the other sub-interface. And lastly is the node on the other side of the router. Now, just to polish this off, all right, so to be clear, what's happening is that transmissions from this particular node are going up to the router on one interface and then turning around on that same interface and coming right back down to the other node. And there we have it. Well, I hope you like this how to video on how to build router on a stick. Remember, it's networking. You can do this.